the uh, chakras, the energy centers, which are inside each of each and all of us. Uh, I'll perhaps for new people tonight, give a very quick summary of what was said then, and then go on. Uh, Sri Mataji would, will be here quite soon. You're here because there is a desire to see, to understand, to know, to be with something more than the day-to-day. -day. Some sort of reality, some sort of truth, some sort of explanation, some sort of all-embracing idea, concept, vision, which places creation into a context. Somewhere there. That seeking is taking us in many directions. Some of us to false and damaging teachers, some to drugs, some to opting out. But it's all led everybody else, of course, everybody here tonight, to this particular function. Sri Mataji is offering an experience. It's not self-certification, it's not like being born again, I am born again, I am born again. It's not a statement of belief, it is an actual physical happening. And that physical happening is known as self-realization. It's known as the Ruh to the Muslim. It's known as the uh, Moksha to the Hindus. It's known as the Enlightenment, the Liberation, Second Birth. There are a number of names for it. and the, the Christ referred to it as the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. But it is all the same thing. It is this experience which links the energy within us to the all-pervading energy of God. The yoga. Yoga means union. And that union is in fact this, the union of this energy here, which lies in the sacral bone at the bottom of the spine, the physical thing, which in the presence of an authorized person, rises through the central channel and piercing the top of the head, the fontanelle bone, actually comes from the top of the head as a cool breeze. It also manifests on the hands as cool vibrations. And another thing that happens then is that this, these cool vibrations and this experience makes one collectively conscious it is a new step, it is another step in evolution. It is, perhaps to put it one way, uh, a move from the human being to a spiritual being. Now, what happens when this, uh, in, uh, the kundalini, this energy at the bottom of the spine rises? It pierces a number of energy centers in the body. Before we go on, it looks though we're going to have more people here than seats. Um, is, there, is it possible, how, how, how are those seats linked together? Are they uh, separate? I'm just wondering if there's any possibility of perhaps just easing the seats back and anybody who would like to uh, 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 come forward and sit on the floor here. They're all linked. Is there any chance of just easing the seats back? Is that practical? Just to give us a little more space here in the front. A desire for creation came, which is represented here by this left channel. Then, what we know, what in the, uh, we with a Christian background know as the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, then became a, the force, that force of God, which brought about creation. And creation is two parts, or two parts of it, two aspects of it, I should say. One is the desire, and the other is the creation itself. So we have two uh, 
uh, channels on the left and the right. One on the left and one on the right. The left hand one is concerned with yesterday, the past, the female aspect in us, uh, the emotional, the uh, that um, sense of desire, introspection. The right hand side is action, that is tomorrow, that is uh, planning, that is organizing, that is dominating, that is being an outgoing personality, that is putting the attention out all the time. Taken to an, taken to an extreme in the left, there is a tendency, or there is uh, extending the left rather, one comes into the subconscious. Everything that has happened in the past is here. And it is possible the further one comes to the left, the more one becomes involved in the past. It is possible on the right hand side for this to go further and further into the right and so it becomes fanatical, dry, and that's the area of heart attacks and those overactive diseases which are so prevalent in the West. The West tends to be very active. The Eastern countries tend to be more on the left. Well, we talk about left and right. What does that mean? I was pointing out the other night that if we say something like, oh, I wish I hadn't said that to somebody. Now that's on the left. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that. Tomorrow, when I see him again, I'll say this to him. Now it's on the right. So we've gone, oh, gee, I'm sorry. And we've come over to the right for tomorrow, I'll do this. At the point of crossing, there's this little moment right in the center. And that is now. When crossed from the past, from the past to the future, there's a crossing point which is now. And that crossing point is this central channel that the Kundalini, this energy, rises up in the process of self-realization. Rising, this uh, Muladhara sits actually below, the, ch the energy center sits below the source of the Kundalini, or where the Kundalini um, originates in the sacrum bone. The first one up, I me mentioned, uh, the next one is the Nabi, the green one. Nabi is concerned with our sustenance. In other words, we now, uh, if you'd like to think of it in terms of evolution, the Muladhara is concerned with that innocence, that original innocence. Then comes the consciousness, the need for food, for shelter, those basic needs. That is the territory of the Nabi. That is also the area of our evolution. The next chakra is the Swadhisthana coming back. And why it's the second chakra is because the Swadhisthana circles around the Nabi. And the Swadhisthana is concerned with uh, the Swadhisthana is concerned with those aspects of creativity, the need to do something. Have we got any seats down here? There's one. Oh. Yes. Well, I think uh, we've still got quite a lot of room down here. If anybody would like to come forward and uh, and and sit and clear some some seats, are you quite are you happy standing there at the back? Yes, there's still quite a bit of uh, sitting room at the front here. So uh, st again, uh, quickly going through these, the, the, the Swadhisthana is on the left is concerned with that, um, with truth, aspects of truth and understanding. That when, what happens prior to realization is that these centers, as we become involved in various activities, day-to-day -day activities, and we, we, they become damaged. They pick up aspects of uh, perhaps unrighteousness or those Adamic things, settle onto the chakras. And this is what self-realization itself starts to clear. In other words, self-realization starts to cleanse the chakras. It starts to mend the damages. It starts to solve the problems. 
So from the wisdom in Muladhara, we come to a sense of evolution and sustenance in the Nabi, creativity here in the Swadhisthan, and then there's this green circle, which is called uh, various things, uh, the sea of illusion, it is frequently and poetically referred to. It is that area which must be crossed if we are to make the transition between the material world and the spiritual world. And we have all sorts of guides there, like Moses and Abraham and Lao Tzu and Confucius and, uh, and I think here is Sri Mataji now. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to see a capacity crowd here. I think that Adelaide deserves the blessings of Sri Mataji, and tonight they're going to get it. So many people came the other night on Saturday and gained their self realization. They followed it up with a beautiful workshop program on Sunday and many people are busily working it out. It's a growing process and Sahaja Yoga is spreading very, very strongly. You see, all of us have to attain that fulfillment that we've been seeking for so many lives. That fulfillment that is known in the scriptures to the Christian as self as being born again, some people call it self-realization. In the Hindu philosophy, it's called Atma Sakshat, self-realization. In the Mohammedan scriptures, it's becoming a peer. When they begin to feel this cool wind of the Holy Spirit, they begin to feel it in their awareness, consciously, on their hands and coming from the top of their head. Feel it as vibrations of the unconscious. And this vibration that they feel is the verification and the manifestation that they have at last made that connection with the unconscious. This is the result and the reward of so many lives when they have been seeking God. And so many people here tonight are in that category. There are so many negative forces which have been trying to stop us. So much confusion in this age of darkness which is known and has been known as the Kali Yuga. So much confusion and frustration of modern living in which people begin to wonder which way to turn, who is truth and who is falsehood, who is the real teacher, who is the false teacher. Sri Mataji has come to do one job only, and that is to awaken this subtle energy within us that energy which we can describe as the reflection of the Holy Ghost within us. She's come to awaken it and to put us in touch with our self, our spirit. When that happens, you begin to feel the bliss and the joy of that final aspect of your spiritual ascent. So, be open-minded for those people that have come for the first time be prepared to receive something great. Be prepared to assume that you can become that higher being, that you can in fact become a spiritual being. There are so many antichrists, there are so many forces of negativity, there is so much confusion in the world today and so many people have come on this earth, whether as I said, antichrists, or as confused people, to mislead us and to perhaps take us through the highways and byways in our seeking. Self-realization establishes something within you in which you can discriminate, in which you can know truth from falsehood. In Sahaja Yoga, which is what happens when you get your realization. Sahaja yoga means spontaneous self-realization. When that happens, you become a collective being. You become collectively conscious. 
You start to feel on your fingertips the centers of others. You start to feel in your awareness what is happening within your own subtle body. You can give realization to others. You can discriminate between the people who are seekers and the people who are false. You can discriminate between those who wish their spiritual ascent and those who are opposing evolution. And this is important because we've never had any yardstick by which we could judge other than our mental activity, other than our emotional activity. Now, when you get your self-realization, you have that yardstick. You have that immutable measure by which you can assume truth. When you begin to feel the truth on your fingertips, as the cool wind of the Holy Spirit, as that power that lies within you, you know for certain that you have met that aspect of your nature which is indeed truth. There will always be people who try to persuade you otherwise, there will always be the prophets of doom that this world is going to be destroyed and so many things. But just ask yourself if the, the God Almighty that created this earth is going to destroy his own creation. We all have to get our self-realization. We all have to become part and parcel of the kingdom of God. We all have to become witness to the play of the divine. We all have to become like Christ. We have to become the principle that is the spirit. And ultimately when we achieve that, the final joy of self-realization begins its process of taking us to that final union with God. In Sahaja Yoga, the first experience of self-realization may be very subtle, it may be very slight, and you may be a little unconvinced. Unconvinced rationally, or in terms of perception. Because, as I said, this subtle, cool wind that you begin to feel on your hand may, in fact, be very, very slight. It may be because this chakra here is a little blocked because of damage to that center. So don't despair if you don't feel it the first time. Know that inside yourself something great has happened. And when that great happening takes place, you owe it to yourself to develop it. Thousands of people are developing it around the world. In Australia, it's growing, and it's growing very strongly. Mother believes that Adelaide is going to be one of the centers where it grows strongest. Already, so many people have got it. Already, so many of the real seekers have come and had the blessings of Mother. Already, they are feeling the Kundalini within themselves. They are feeling the cool wind. They are attaining their spirit. This is what we've been all seeking. This has been our goal, whether we've been a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Muslim, whatever it may be. This has been the goal and yet we are all one. We are all part of God Almighty. There is no difference. What the Buddha said is no different to what Christ has said. What the Hindu scriptures and the saints have said is no different to what Muhammad has said. They've all said the same thing. So we have to become that integrating force that is a realized soul. We have to get the enlightenment. We have to awaken within ourselves the divinity that has been sleeping there for so many births and we have to get the reward of all our seeking. Mother is the one who can deliver the goods. Mother is the one who can awaken the Kundalini. She is the one who can slowly and patiently and lovingly nourish her children after they get their self-realization. She is the one who is respected by the saints as the mother, as the Mataji who has come on this earth to give the blessings of God to the seekers and to give the creation its own meaning. So, without any further introduction from me, it gives me great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you again 
Her Holiness Sri Mataji Nemala Devi. Seekers of truth, I bow. <coughs> we have to be the true seekers of truth, which is a rare quality people think. But I have found out that in this world there are many seekers who are honestly and earnestly seeking. They are seeking the truth. They are trying to find out what is within them. They are trying to find out what is being prophesied about them. It has been prophesied that the day of judgment will come. This is the day of judgment when you are going to be judged. You are not going to be put into any scales or there is no other measure by which you are going to be judged but by knowing how far truthful you are about your seeking and how far you can gain something about it. <coughs> Today I had a chance to be with some media people and yesterday also I feel some of them just want to bring some controversy to make it more interesting perhaps, whatever it is. As a mother, I have to tell you that I have to take nothing from you. I have come here to give you. If you are identified with any organization or you think you can fight for an organization, it would be very be much better that you should not disturb us who are the people who are real seekers sitting down here. It would be very civil of you to be away from us because we are not identified with any organization but with our own self. We have no organization you know in Sahaja Yoga and every type of a person is allowed to come in Sahaja Yoga so that he gets the full advantage of his testing. In my <coughs> own experiences, I have found out that people in the West are rather difficult to get realization to begin with. In India, there can be 6,000 people and just in a split of a second, their Kundalini rises and they get their realization. It's a fact. But even when they get realization, they are not so seriously adhering to it and they don't try to learn about the technique of the laws of God's love. But in the West, on the contrary, though the first motion is very slow, some people get it and lose it, but they are very great seekers. They get completely transformed. I have seen people who have been drunkards, alcoholics, who have been taking drugs and who have been homosexuals, who led a very wretched life, did all kinds of nonsensical things to ruin themselves. Once they get realization, they really become so aware of themselves, their self-esteem rises and they take to Sahaja Yoga in a very proper, auspicious way. It's something surprising that those who can get realization very fast are not so good for giving realizations to others. They do not seem to understand that it has to be given to other people. While those who take more time, those who have suffered so much, those who have had a miserable life before, those who people could be condemned as the worst people on this earth, become so beautiful, not only that, but they take it upon themselves that this great joy of God's love must be given to others. 
But of course, we, despite all that, we do have some funny people in every group sometimes who are like dog in the manger. They don't get their realization, nor do they allow others to get it. It's a, some feeling with very frivolous and flippant people who are harmed very badly, still they don't want to have the blessings of God and try to create problems for us. It is a sad thing that it should happen in a country where there are so many seekers who are already lost. So many people who are God's own people are lost. One must have some civil sense in understanding that those who are lost are the people of God. As William Blake has said, that the men of God will become prophets and those who will become prophets will make other prophets. This is the first thing that happens to you that you become a prophet. In the sense that you become a saint, in the sense that the energy of God which is all pervading, which is doing all living work starts flowing through. And when it starts flowing through you, you can use that power not only to correct yourself and improve yourself, but give this the blessing of peace and bliss to God. Please be seated properly. If you can't sit, you sit on a chair, all right? Now, for us it is important to understand that I am here talking about something that is extremely holy and auspicious. It has not worked out before. This is the first time in the history of spirituality so many people are taking their realization. As I said, this is the time of last judgment. This is the time of resurrection which Muhammad Sahib has described that at that time your hands will be speaking. How can hands speak? Anybody can say that how can hands speak? But the Muslims don't think about it. They just say, let us do namaz all the time, morning till evening, do the exercise of namaz and we'll get realization. Christians think that they will get their uh, realization if they take their baptism. It's not so. All these religions were established much before just to keep you in balance, to live a life of moderation. On the contrary, human beings have gone to the extremes. But I must tell you that the Divine is so generous, is so kind, is working so fast that despite all these things that you have done to yourself and to your society and as human beings, the way you have erred or whatever you have done, it just forgets and forgives because you are the children of God because he is your father. He is the father who is love, who is truth, who is joy. And he is anxious that his children should enter into his kingdom and enjoy all the blissful thing that he has to give. Now, if you want to see how you are made, you will be surprised. We must have self-esteem. We must understand that God has created us with very great care with very great love to become human beings. And we should not, for anything whatsoever, whosoever it may be, the guru or the cult or the religion or anything, should neglect ourselves. Then you will be responsible for your own neglect and not God Almighty or any one of these prophets, they have said that you can be saved. Now, as you see, within us lies these subtle centers. These subtle centers are the ones which, whose represent within us a different stage of evolution. First of all, if you see the first center is the Muladhara. Now, this center is very important because, for Australians I should say, because in the universe, this center is Australia. Australia is the place where this center we can consider as manifesting the powers of Muladharacha. It is the most powerful center in the whole being. Because it is the power 
of innocence in a human being. The innocence that is the matter, matter is innocent. Animals are innocent. Because they haven't developed their ego so far, neither they have got those conditionings by which we are supposed to be sinners. A dog or a horse or a camel, none of them think that they are sinners. It's only we think that we are sinners and we have done something wrong. The reason for this is that God has given us freedom. So whatever we have done in that freedom, we feel responsible for it and we start condemning ourselves as sinners and all those things. But who feels that he is a sinner is the ego and not the spirit. The spirit does not commit any sin. It's the purest of pure. Nothing can contaminate it. Nothing can destroy it. Nothing can make it absolutely invisible. It is all the time there within our heart watching what we are doing. As described in Gita, it's called as Kshetragya. The one who knows the field, who watches the field, who is the witness of the field, which resides in our heart. All these things, whatever are said, has to happen to us, otherwise it just becomes our mental activity. I have nothing to bring in anything that is controversial. Everybody has brought out some sort of a thing and said that this is this and this is this. But one must know that once you get your self-realization, it must work. That's the point people do not understand, that if you go to a guru, did it work out your own powers? Maybe they might be paying you for doing some work, doesn't matter, that's another enterprise. But did it give you the reality? Did it give you your absolute meaning? It has given you your purpose or not? Has it, fi has it finished your seeking or not? You must ask these questions to yourself and be truthful about it. If not, then you better get it. Now, to say that I am the only person doing this is all comes out of these people asking funny questions to you. Now, the thing is, she asked me a question, are you the only person doing it? I said, I don't know of any other. I mean, you can twist it the way you like. But so far, I haven't met anyone who is giving mass realization. I have not met anyone. And if I meet, I'll be very happy to retire. Even if the Sahaja Yogis who come up to that level can give mass realization just like that, it would be a nice idea to retire because now I'm going to be 60 years of age and I think I deserve retirement after the hard work of 14 years. This one is the first center, as I told you, is this great country of Ganesha, Australia. The symbol of this is already expressed in the place called as Ayers. Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock. Rock, if you go and see, has the symbol which is embodying the great deity that resides on this. That has the same color, if you say that. And it has the same deity sitting down there, which is called Ashri Ganesha in the Sanskrit language. Now this deity, innocent deity, or the one which is representing innocence, incarnated on this earth for our sake, for our salvation, as our Lord Jesus Christ. He incarnated and He is bestowed upon that center of Agya which you see there, which is actually the body is made of the sun. That's why most of the Christians are sun worshippers. This great personality came on this earth with a very great work because all others also you can see, but today I would like to speak about him. I was told in Adelaide there are lots of churches, but every human being is a church of God and temple of God. In that resides Christ at this point, which is the gate you can see very clearly. In that gate he resides and that is the cross which he has carried, on which he was crucified because this cross was too tight and something had to pass through it. His resurrection is the message to all the Christians that the way he resurrected, you are going to be resurrected by God Almighty. He came on this earth, suffered for you, and he died on the cross just to give you this special privilege of having this great 
Agya Chakra there, which he adores. This is the Agya Chakra within us. Now the mistake lies in one thing, that when we say of baptism, it is not an artificial process. It is a living process. Christ could not have talked of something artificial or ritualistic. What he said, baptism was that the Kundalini should be awakened and it should penetrate through this fontanelle bone area and should give you the experience of the Holy Ghost. Now this, what I am saying, is also written in an Indian book about our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do not read the right books in Sanskrit because they are not translated. What we are reading are the so-called pseudo-people who came about from 50 years back and tried to preach about Hinduism or some sort of ism. But about Christ, nobody told. When they came from other countries to visit India, nobody told that he is the Mahavishnu because nobody knew about it. They could not relate it. They could not relate, they could not tell that he was the incarnation of the Mahavishnu. And Mahavishnu is the one, if you read in the Devi Mahatmya, the everything tallies exactly with the character of Sri Jesus Christ. If you read it, you will be amazed how clearly he is described. Even it is described that first he was an egg. And out of the egg, half egg was Sri, Sri uh, Ganesha and the half egg became Sri Jesus Christ. And then that's why on uh, Easter day, if you know, we always give eggs, meaning we human beings are eggs at this time as human beings, but we have to become the bird. He came on this earth specially for creating a very special type of device and an awareness within us. Because this is the gate, as I told you, to the kingdom of God, which is the limbic area within us. Whatever is in the subtle is in the gross. So this limbic area was to be achieved through piercing through one gate, that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Now how to pierce it was a problem because if anybody tried to pierce it, he may just go on the sides and become something else but a super conscious man. So it was Jesus Christ who is the embodiment of the root, the all-pervading power, the Chaitanya, the Umkara, he came on this earth and he did that job for us because he resides there. Now what he said by the second birth or by baptism was that this Kundalini which is lying at the triangular bone there has to rise. Rise and penetrate through this center, awaken Jesus Christ there. Now the what great miraculous thing he has done, that once you awaken this center within us, these two institutions on the left and the right, one is the ego, another is the superego. One is the ego which gives us all uh, ideas about ourselves which are not really self-esteem, but something false. And superego is the condition in which we human beings become conditioned, in which we accept conditions, I am this, I am this, I am this. Both the things are sucked in by the awakening of the Kundalini of this great incarnation on this earth. Once it is sucked in, what you find that on top of your head, where you reach this place, you find that it has become an open space now and suddenly you find the Kundalini is rising and you can feel the breeze of the Holy Ghost. In the Bible about Holy Ghost, very little is written, but for that you have to go to Indian scriptures where she is described as the power of God Almighty as Adi Shakti. It is not proper to bind yourself like a horse and see whatever is available, but open yourself out and see the references that are given about the great happening of the advent of Sri Jesus Christ. Now, what relations he has with Sri Krishna, with Sri Rama, 
with other deities and other prophets is to be seen later on when you come to Sahaja Yoga, gradually you realize that they are all related to each other. And Christ has openly says, said that those who are not against are with me. The three people who went to see Jesus when he was born were Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesha. It's described where the three great people who went to see Jesus he was born was Sri Krishna as Vishnu and Mahesha is Shiva and Brahma as Brahmadeva. All these people went to worship. Nobody knew from where they came, who they were. They were called as the three wise men. Now whatever I am saying has to be first experienced. Because if I say something, need not be true. As I would say that it is not essential that you should believe every word I say. On the contrary, blind faith is against Sahaja Yoga. It should happen to you first. Once it happens, then you will be amazed that you yourself is a very great, miraculous instrument of God. You will be amazed how this instrument works. Even the people who come to me say, Mother, we are gone cases, we are good for nothing, we led a very bad life, we are inauspicious, every sort of thing. I said, now let it be. You don't judge yourself. Let the divine judge you. Let's see what happens to you. Why are you after yourself? Forget it. First of all, you did mistakes, doesn't matter. But now you are using that again to harm yourself. So please forget all the mistakes, everything that has been done, all wrong things you think you have done. Only you get what you have. I am here just to give that what you have. Now this great happening takes place in such a smooth way in people who are normal people. But not in all the people, I would say. Some people do not feel it because they have some abnormalities in their different centers which are placed within. These are the subtle centers expressed outside as growth centers. They are all the time there, but the deities within them are not yet enlightened. They only get enlightened when the Kundalini rises and pierces through the fontanelle moon area. Now the spirit resides in the heart. Spirit is the reflection of God Almighty and Holy Ghost is the power of God, the Shakti of God, which manifests everything else. You'll be amazed how in the gross these things can be seen, absolutely into the grossest thing. My son-in-law is a great, great photographer and he was working on Himalaya. Ultimately, I said, you take it from some old books and find out about it. So I gave him an idea that you go and see near Manasarovar. There's a place called Manasarovar where also you find the Sadashiva is kept, just like a human being, human face. Twelve miles of area, you can see that it's just a human being, a face of a human being, which is called as Dakshinamurti, which is looking towards the uh, south. And this one is just there, not melted at all, nothing is all the time there. And if you see the face, there are two other aspects of him are shown on his head. But I told him that in Manasarovar, if you go, that is the Supari, Manasa. Manasa means the, the emotional mind. You see, English language is rather funny. But I tell you, Manasa means the emotional mind. There is this emotional mind represented as Manasarovar. And after that, he, I told him there must be another one. He said, yes, there is another one which is called as Rakshastha. Rakshasa, you know, the word Rakshasa means a devil, Rakshastal. And now that Rakshastal is so turbulent, despite the fact they are close to each other. And between them is placed this Sadashiva's uh, image. But this Rakshastal is so turbulent that one can't believe that the same, uh, at the same place these two are having a different type of nature. And those people who went with him would not even touch that water of that Rakshastha because it, it represented the ego, lest they become ego-oriented. So they would not touch it. So this was nothing. You see, there are so many things in the gross, you can make it out. Whatever is described in the old times is there existing, it is there. 
In the same way, human beings are in the intermediate state, and if you go even subtler, you'll find all these centers are weak. Now, how can you prove through Kundalini that what I'm saying is true? That we have to see for oneself. Because in the West, I have to go on convincing people, convincing people, pleading them for their realization. Just for getting realization, I have to put all, put forward all kinds of explanations, all kinds of suggestions that they should believe that they can get self-realization. There are people also who say, how can you get it so easily? But if I say you can, why not try it? What's the harm? It is so difficult to convince a mind which is all the time thinking about it. You can't think about it. You can't think about a sprouting of the seed. It just works out. If you put a seed in the Mother Earth, it just works out. You don't have to think. If you start thinking about it, will it sprout? It will not. It is the capacity of the Mother Earth that does the job. But that time we take it for granted. In the same way, if I say, you can get your self-realization, people start being doubtful about it. Another thing is that it is the other way now. It is you who has to take something, not that I have to take anything from you. You cannot give me anything. It's you who has to benefit by it, not me. So why there should be a question when I'm not selling anything, when I'm not acquiring anything out of you, when there is no possibility of you being exploited or plundered by me or used by me? Why should you get this doubt in your mind? Is it also that you feel doubtful about yourself? But that is to be decided by the divine and not by you. So please, first of all, try to know that you are the spirit and that you have to become the spirit and that once you become the spirit, you become collectively conscious. Today only, when I went for this interview for the ABC, the gentleman was, uh, of course, interviewed me. When I came out, there was a lady. And I told the lady that you have got liver trouble. She asked me, how do you know? Did he tell you? I said, nobody told me, but I know because I know. So that's what happens to you, that you become collectively conscious. You can feel it on your hands, what's wrong with others and with yourself. Now when we come to this point of realization, we have to know that the problems of this world are due to one fact, that we have not achieved our absolute. Some people think by doing alternate work, we'll be happier. If supposing somebody is a capitalist, he become a communist. Then if he's a communist, he become a socialist. These are all manufactures of this brain. But actually, if you ask, I am a complete capitalist because I have all the powers, and I am a complete communist because I can't live without giving it to you. So how the communism and capitalism, which is so artificial outside, becomes a reality with you that you become empowered with your real powers and not unreal powers, because possessions and things are unreal. They are not real powers. And once you get these real powers, you want to share it with others. You want to give it to others. You want to work it out for others. And under this, Modern uh, circumstances where we think we are very frustrated and we are unhappy, that's where we are going to God, is a wrong statement. You are coming to God because you have been seekers of ages. You have been seeking long time back. And this is the time the fruit of it is coming. I've met so many children, even in Australia, who are born realized. Great saints are taking their birth today just to do this God's work. And you will find that you are one of them who has been seeking. In Nalada Mainti Puran, which was written, I think, 16,000 years back, it is mentioned that this Nala got very angry with Kali. Kali is the one who governs these modern times. And he said, I'm going to kill you. Because you create confusion in the minds of people, you create complete uh, confusion of values, and you make them destroy themselves. So I better destroy you once for all. So there is no problem for human beings. So Kali said, all right, you can destroy me, but I have some good points. You must know also the importance of my being there. He said, what is your importance? He said, the importance is that when I will come on this earth to rule that time, these people who are now 
wandering in the Himalayas, wandering in the hills and dales all over the world who are seeking outside the cities, outside the houses, will find the answer. They will find the God Almighty. They will find their spirit. He said it about 16,000 years back, and that is today has started. The point where we have to be really sure is that this is the time because the signs and symptoms are like that. You can't imagine so many people seek anywhere in the world, uh, any time, when even Christ came, it was so difficult to carry these 12 people with him. Nobody was seeking at that time. He, of course, gave sermons, he talked about it. That is the last we can say, who was such a great incarnation on this earth, but nobody listened to him. After that moment came when he lived, how people treated him. They tried to poison him, they tried to torture him, and he had such a miserable life that the Muslims today, when they behave in the same manner, it is most surprising that whatever he has suffered, the people have to support, suffer at the hands of these Muslims. There are other also ideas people have got, like we must suffer for our emancipation, or we must cleanse ourselves. Already somebody has suffered for us. There is no need for you to suffer and do all these things. As I said, that Jews believed in it and they denied Christ. Then they suffered. Really, they suffered. But after that suffering, was there any transformation? On the contrary, they were so embittered. The way they behaved while killing these PLO people, you would be amazed. The same people who suffered so badly forgot all that and became such cruel people and they killed so many people. So this kind of a suffering doesn't bring any kind of transformation within you. Transformation has to take place. This is the condition of yourself. If the self is manifesting, it is not that you believe in this and I believe in that. It is. It's no question of believing. It is. That is what it is. Nothing to be believed into blindly or to be professed into or to accept something. But it is there within you and that is an absolute truth. Even if there are ten small children sitting and they are realized souls. And if you ask them, what is the condition of this gentleman? They will all raise one finger. This means only one thing. Because they can feel it on their fingers, something burning, maybe something numb, maybe something heavy. All of them, even if you tie their eyes, will say the same thing, because truth is the same. As all of us are sitting here, we know it's night and that the color of this thing is creamish or whatever it is. In the same way, when you get your realization, the feeling, the awareness comes in your feeling and this feeling tells you exactly where you are and what you have to do. It is a remarkable thing that you are a human being. It's the greatest work of God. The greatest creation of God is human being. Of course, you may think they are ugly and you should have nothing to do with them. There are some people who just believe that human beings are the ugliest thing, but they are not. Only thing they have not been put to the means. This is yoga, is the union with the divine. Unless and until any instrument is put to the means, to its source, it has no meaning. In the same way, unless and until you are put to the means, you will have no meanings. So the best thing is for you to be convinced that you have to have your realization and it can work out in a split of a second and let it work out. Just work it out. It's the best for you that anyone can suggest that you become the self. Now about the self, I have talked many a times and told people that self is the one that is residing in your heart. But the seat of the self is here, the Sadashiva. It stands here. And when the Kundalini rises and touches that, the seat, the seat sends message to the heart, and then the heart starts feeling, throwing those vibrations. Actually, it is not the spirit that does, but it is the Kundalini, after enlightenment, starts pulsating. It's so clear cut you can't imagine. It is so beautiful you can't imagine. Now the result of this 
self-realization. In this short time, I have to cover many points, and that's why I'm trying to cover it up. Is first of all, you get your physical fit, fitness. People ask me, how could you be cured physically? If you are doctors here, you'll understand that doctors do not know anything about parasympathetic nervous system. That is the expression of the central path within us called as the Sushumna Nadi. This parasympathetic nervous system gives us the balance, the sustenance. For example, if you are running fast, your heartbeat increases, but it is slowed down by the action of parasympathetic nervous system. When the Kundalini is awakened, this parasympathetic nervous system becomes uh, evident in our awareness. First time the spirit starts becoming one with our attention. Our attention itself becomes enlightened. Now when this Kundalini rises, this parasympathetic nervous system starts manifesting itself and whatever center is exhausted by which an imbalance is created within us, in our physical body or in our emotional body or in our mental body or in our spiritual body, it starts absolutely behaving in a manner as if we have reached our total blessings. It just disappears. It just disappears. And it is so surprising that people don't want to believe it because they have seen a person behaving this manner and that manner and suddenly next day overnight they find the person who is an alcoholic becomes a free bird. They find a drug addict becoming a free bird. They can't believe it. It is fantastic. Everything that God does is fantastic. All his work we are taken for granted. At least this living work of God, you can understand that it works with it. It is beyond all your dogmas, all your philosophies, all your complications because it is unlimited. While your brain is limited, your intelligence is limited. And if you want to understand God, you cannot understand it by this limited thing, which is your brain. Of course, logically you can come to conclusion. You have to come to conclusion logically understanding that you cannot pay for it, you cannot work it out, it has to be spontaneous, and you cannot do it yourself. Everything you can do it yourself, but realization has to be worked out by somebody who is an enlightened person. For example, if I work it out for any one of you, that person can work it out for others. This is so simple as that, and I think it is high time that we should go in for realization. We have so many people, and I won't be able to attend to you if I continue with the speech. Is it all right for you to have the realization now? Just open any window here. Either air condition or If you do not treat yourself with respect, nobody can treat you with respect. So be respectful about it and try to get the blessings of realization. That would be a nice idea. By the way, we have now been able to get some people to work in Adelaide for you to go further with your realization and understanding what it is, to learn the technique of it. And once you learn the technique, you will find it will help you a lot to help others. And if you are intelligent enough, you can do it very well. Will you please all put your hands towards me like this, just like that. Those who don't want to do it should please go away and leave us alone. I would request you, those who don't want to do meditation should go away and don't disturb others because it spoils the vibrations of people. So those who don't want to do it, please go away. You don't want to do it? No, 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 no question today. I've had enough of questions this morning. Will you please go? No, you can write, all right. You can write to me. You see, the questions I've had too many and I want to attend to everyone. You remember last time how much I had to work and I couldn't attend to everyone. So it's better not to attend to anybody's personal questions. Uh, it's not proper because I want to give attention to you all. You see, if you have any questions, you may write to me and I'll let you know. Please put your hands towards me. All of you should do it, those who do not want to do it. Again, I say, please be civil and kind and go away as proper people and don't try to disturb us. Please put your hands towards us. 
You may write your questions and come and see me tomorrow morning, all right? If you have any questions, I'll give you special time. You have also questions? All right, so can you go out now and write down? Why not? You cannot force yourself to be here. It is very wrong. You want to force. Why? Because no, that's not, I'm not going to waste any time with you, but it's very unkind of you to force us like that. We never come to your meetings. Why should you come to our meeting and disturb us? It's not proper. It's all right, forget it now. We have, I have nothing to talk. No, no, it's all right. Don't disturb us. Please. Please, will you behave yourself? Or ask him to get out. Why do you call yourself God? All right, forget it just now. You are God, is it? What good have you done to anyone that you are here to object me? Have you done any good to anyone so far? Not even to yourself. Then why don't you allow me to do good to others? All right, now don't talk. Keep your hands like this. I could see the way he is. <laughs> I could see that. Immediately I pointed out. You see, among all of All right, keep yourself shut. You only know how to talk, you have a big mouth, that's all. Nothing more. Keep, please close your eyes. Please close your eyes. With both hands towards me, you just close your eyes and don't worry about others. Just think of yourself just now that you have to have this experience. So many people had experience in the last meeting and you all should have it. Even if you are thinking, it does not matter. Let loose your attention. Don't put any pressure on your attention. Just let loose your attention. Now, as I told you, the left hand is the power of your desire and the right side is the power of your action. So with your left hand on your lap, in a very relaxed manner, you raise your right hand to your heart, to your heart. And ask a question within yourself, not loudly. Mother, am I the spirit? Just put your hand right on your heart. Left hand towards me. Left hand towards me. Just ask a question, Mother, am I the spirit.
Now put this right hand on your stomach, on the left hand side, which is the center of your guru, the primordial master, as you are the master of yourself. You just say, Mother, I am the master. Am I the master? We asked the other day. Today you say, Mother, I am my own guru. I am my own master. With full confidence you should say. You should understand it fully within yourself that unless and until you become a master, you cannot make out who is true, who is not true. You cannot make it out. So first of all, you become the master. Put your right hand on your stomach, on the left hand side and ask a question if you have come today for the first time. But those who would got realization the other day must say, Mother, I am the master. I am the guru. You don't need any guru because your spirit is the guru. Your spirit is the guru. Just awaken your spirit. Now again, raise your hand higher on the heart and say, Mother, I am the Spirit. Just say that. Now put this right hand on the left side of your neck, which is another center of Vishuddhi. You are yourself raising your own Kundalini. At this center, you have to say, Mother, I am not guilty. Say it again. Not to feel guilty for anything that you think you have done wrong. Just say, Mother, I am not guilty. Because the instrument that you are has to be cured by the Divine because you have to do God's work. This is God's work. Unless and until you feel completely relieved of your guilt, how can you work out God's things? If you have said mantras or something in an unauthorized way, also you develop this trouble on the left side, which is a very dangerous thing to develop and thus you develop a heart, heart trouble and can be at a very early age, you might suffer from a heart trouble. So better say, Mother, I am not guilty. If you are the spirit, then how can you be guilty? There's another danger that lies by saying all these mantras, that one can develop diseases like cancer, osteomyelitis and all these by saying wrong mantras, by guided by some wrong gurus. So if you have done anything like that, you have to say, Mother, I am not guilty. It can have very serious effects very serious effects.
especially the muscular part can be absolutely uh, paralyzed on the left side. Now put your right hand on across the forehead. And say, Mother, I forgive everyone. This you have to say with full heart and full understanding. Because the other day you remember that when you said it, immediately you got your realization. Before that, it was all blocked up in the blockage. You have to forgive. Forgive others. Forgive others. If you have self-esteem, then you will respect others also. Otherwise, you cannot have respect. If you do not respect yourself, you cannot respect others. The first thing is, you must say, I forgive everyone. Not to get upset by what has happened or what somebody does to you, but just to say, I forgive everyone. Some people say it is difficult to forgive, but I think it is a myth. Because when you forgive, what do you do? You just are forgiving yourself, because you are not anymore suffering from the embitterment from others. Now put the same hand on top of your head. Just on top of your sastra. Now you have to see, it has to work, it has to work out. It's not just talking, but it has to work out. Now see for yourself, raise your hand a little higher. At this stage, you have to ask for realization because I cannot cross your freedom. So say, Mother, please give us realization at this point. Just put your hand parallel to your fontanelle bone area. Now put the other hand and see if there's a cool breeze coming out. Put your right hand towards me. Just put your right hand towards me. Whether you are sick or anything, you just work it out. It's there. Yes. You have to convince yourself. Nobody can convince you. It is you who has to convince yourself. You have to feel it yourself. If you are not feeling it, then there's something wrong with you. Doesn't matter. We'll work it out. It should. It should work out. If you are not feeling it, then it's not correct. Now you can also change again the hand and say that. Find for yourself and ask a question. Is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Ask a question. Now report is established. So see for yourself. See now how you are feeling cooler with the same thing. It's because you have become yourself an air conditioner. That's why you all are feeling cooler, otherwise you are feeling so hot. So where is that heat gone now? Just see the proof. If there is too much heat, that means you are either a liver patient or some disease there which is to be attended. See for yourself. If you, even if you are paid by some guru, better get your realization because they can give you only money which you can't take with you. Better take your realization to be wise and sensible. Be good children. Take your realization. This is the chance of lives. Now, put your both hands like that and ask a question in your heart, is this the breeze of the Holy Ghost we are feeling? You will start feeling the cool breeze in your heart. 
sensation crawling down your hands. All right? Now put your hands towards me. I'll also teach you how to give realization. I'll try to teach you how to give yourself a realization, which is a very simple method of maintaining your realization. Apart from that, there are going to be some Sahaja Yogis here who are going to help you to progress further. This hat is to be placed in front of your Kundalini like this. This is the fixed hand, you can say the fixed movement. And this right hand is to be taken round like this, higher, in front and low. Everything should be intelligible. You should understand why we do it. See, clockwise method is better to raise the Kundalini now. It's not just you tell some mantras to someone and you jump like a frog. It's really, it should happen in a way that is happening. Now, put your hands like that. Now, take it up. Again, we have to give a knot up there. It's a raising of the Kundalini. Let's do again. The truth is so abounding that to deny is dishonest. It's dishonest, complete dishonest. Now take it. One more. Now give it up. Give it one more. Now try you have to do it. One, two, three. Now see for yourself. All right? feel very peaceful. The other day I had a lady who came quite stunned. She could not believe that she's so much changed. And she said, I've become a free person now. All right? Good. So thank you very much. And if you have any other problem of some disease or anything, you can come and see me now.